what a man yeah. that has this or even people in relationships now where they might do one thing and they're like right that's it i'm done well do you feel uh, like disposable not- we've gotten uh, disposable everything is disposable if you like we've gotten and that's why i say society trickles down into relationships it can't divorce the two so what goes on society will be manifested in your relationship so if we have a, a, rela- a relationship with society where amazon prime you get something straight away or something like cheap clothes so you throw them out or whatever it is you replace 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 that becomes a culture in your relationships as well. So one small thing, quick, let's get rid of it and start again. And that's the culture we have now. What do you think women are going to struggle with in the next few years with relationships? I think what they'll struggle with is they're going to lose touch with their authenticity. And what I mean by that is because we're so driven to become something else now, either look a certain way, dress a certain way, act a certain way, act like a bad bitch or whatever it is, what women and most people crave is an authentic, uh, solid connection. And what we're going to struggle with and we're going to see a rise in is people becoming inauthentic to get acceptance and to get notoriety. And so what that's going to look like is a bunch of fake connections and then a very hollow sense of self in the future. Oh, wow. That's... Another good line, Sadia. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, my God. Thanks. <laughs> we have to yeah. put the applause Do you know on. what? I, why I'm happy I said that is because I've got a first time. And a female asking me questions. I haven't thought about these questions before, so it's kind of a bit more spontaneous. So I'm coming up with things that I didn't even know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've so seen a lot of your stuff where yeah. it's been like a lot of like Men. Pill like, yeah. and, and people that like, got nothing against him. I think he's great and what he's done. Like Andrew Tate, uh, free Andrew Tate. <laughs> oh, I miss him. Don't you miss him yeah. coming up on your feed just yeah. talking nonsense? Yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, with the I, yeah, I miss him. Where are you at, Tate? Oh, We're hopefully, inshallah, for- soon. Inshallah, <laughs> soon. We're waiting for him, inshallah. Yeah, hopefully. Andrew Tate. Yes. I feel like he's been quite helpful for women as well. What do you think? I think I, I'm a fan of Andrew. I've got no problems with Andrew. But here's the thing you're taking a very hyper successful man with a, a hyper pleasure seeking environment and him giving his perspective to the average Jimmy in his basement, it just doesn't work. And as much as I love him and I understand his message and it really appeals to the people I know, I'm talking from a perspective of a girl of a girl that could be you know, what they talk about like you can get dinner for free or you could go on a yacht and blah blah so I get what he's saying but the majority of the world doesn't get that and so that's why I feel like sometimes it's falling onto the hands of the wrong audience but like I feel like since I because I think growing up in the culture and the background that I have you kind of know what you have to do as a woman I'm sure yeah, a lot we, of people we are, that's true I think I know what you're gonna yeah, say like sorry when guests come make coffee tea yeah. when, when there's people here you hospitality know, we know how to do it I feel like he's helped a lot of women understand yeah. their place in some sense. He, he really does. And the thing is, this is a problem that happens with the men that follow him, is that they take on board what he says about masculinity and forget what he tells men about how to be chivalrous and how to treat women. He, they just ignore that part and they focus on the fact that I can sleep with lots of women and I don't need to do this and men are this, blah, blah, blah. So they take it wrong. But his actual message is actually a healthy one. On the whole, there are things that I disagree with, but on the whole, it's a healthy message and uh, it just it's men are being very selective of what they're taking on board and women are being very selective by what they're offended by yeah. and both of them are, are being very polarized but if you take his overall message there's a lot of good in there I think so too mm-hmm. it's such a shame that the media took it out of context mm-hmm. and I actually feel like he's at because I've met a lot of young guys actually my team mm-hmm. they absolutely love Andrew oh Tate. everybody loves Andrew um, Tate. Uh, everybody the younger does. I did an interview with him and I remember having like cousins in Pakistan who are so young and were so excited about it and, and I'm like how did Andrew Tate be you know, excited <laughs> and I'm like how do you know him and everybody knows him I think even my dad might even know who he is and for my dad to know someone then you must be super famous because yeah, he doesn't yeah, know yeah, anyone yeah. so yeah he's it's incredible how one person can have such an influence though isn't it incredible even my nephews and stuff like that they'll say something which is like quite soft mm-hmm. and i'm like you just need to listen to Andrew. and um was there anything that you disagree with from I think, a female's I th- perspective I, I just think he was like when you're in the social media space a lot of the stuff is for clout he was doing it it was all an act mm-hmm. and you can tell a lot of it was an act mm-hmm. um, the only thing that i think was bad about him is his tonality and how he said stuff mm-hmm. because if you've not watched his long form stuff yeah. i actually think the guy's being deadly serious mm-hmm. and that's the only thing i'd yeah. say okay. if a girl's doing only fans yeah. And it's his girlfriend. She has to give the money to him. Yeah. I think that was just for... I don't get it. What about you? Well, having met Andrea, I don't think it's a complete lie. It's something that he probably would do as a joke. I think he would definitely yeah. do that as a joke. But a lot of what he says, he is that person. 
He is that you know, offer charismatic. He is that guy. He is very opinionated. He is very strong. I would love to, if inshallah he ever comes out, I would love to uh, sit down and just dissect some of the things that I think are leading to uh, relationships falling apart because some of them do fall apart when they take on board what he says and they go down the... Oh, as, as in being it. a high value yeah, dating and they multiple take it and, women. Yeah, that sort of stuff. The dating multiple women and this, that and the other. That sort of stuff. It doesn't lead to a conducive, happy home environment. Because you know what? Now that we're on that topic, I've actually met a lot of women that are dating guys that are quite high value and they yeah. give them the option to well, be able to But the thing is, I always say that women actually just want an investment. Now, if you give her a financial investment, she's okay about the emotional monogamy because that's a form of investment. But if there's no financial investment, she expects more emotional investment. So you just got to balance it out. You, we want investment, whether that's financial, emotional, whatever it is. Now, if you're not covering us financially, you better give us all of you emotionally. Mm -hmm. But if you're covering us financially, for a lot of women, they're like, maybe you might step out, but I get to live this life, live this house, have this car. I know you care about me. Is there anything wrong with that? No, no, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's a, because it's a form of care. It is a form of care. It's a form of love, it's a form right? Of like of saying... And, uh, it's a form of investment. You've got to accept the way men and women are designed rather than reject it and judge it. Women want investment. Men want loyalty or whatever it is. So if women want investment and if you want to step out and do all of those things, pick a woman who accepts financial investment as a form of investment. Don't pick a woman who wants emotional investment. She's going to not find that enough. She's going to want loyalty. So you just got to pick your woman. But every woman's tips on the scale, whether she wants more financial or whether she wants more emotional. If you want to step out and you've got the resources for it, find that woman that wants the more, as long as she's got her financial investment, she's good. Don't choose the one that needs emotional investment. Usually it's the ones that have been hurt or traumatized. They need more emotional. They don't care about the finances. Because other women would judge other women no. for having that. No. Having a high value man and essentially he steps out essentially he steps out and they're like oh my god why are women judging that other woman uh, because that? it's easy to judge a situation you can't access when you can access a man that's taking you left right and center and paying for everything and taking you first class then tell me what you would do in that situation it's very easy to judge circumstances that you can't access but when you can access it then you can form a more informed judgment so i think the people that judge it can't access it so they don't even know what that life looks like so that's why I think they judge. Because I've I've seen many cases or I've heard, oh, you know, so-and-so's partner cheats and stuff like that. But it's, it, for me, in, in some cases, it's kind of like an open marriage, no? Or is well, it? I always say that high-value men are more likely to be cheated on back. They just don't realise it. Really? Absolutely. I always say rich men are the most likely to be cheated on, especially in Dubai. Why? Because the women they choose. What? The women, when you're a broke man, you're limited in terms of the women you can access. Yeah. You can only access the limited range of women. So you're only going to access a simple kind of woman because you're a simple man. That simple woman doesn't have many options. So you're both optionless and you're both good to go. You've got a connection, you're good to go. Now, if you are a high value man, let's say, for example, you're George Clooney, you can access whoever you want in the world. No, whoever you want so you could choose a Kim if you're Kanye you can choose a Kim do you think Kanye is the only rich man she knows no do you think Kanye is the best she can get many of you so what happens is as a man becomes more successful his criteria and selection of women becomes more provocative promiscuous it's usually the dream girl that dream girl knows 10 of you but if you choose that simple girl that works in Starbucks of course she's going to be loyal to you but what high value man chooses that he chooses the sexiest girl on screen. So he's always, I always say to men who are high value rich, especially in Dubai, before I've even met that girl, I'm cheating on you. Why? Because she likes you for your lifestyle and she knows plenty of men with your lifestyle. You're just covering her current bills. I feel bad for men now. I feel like Don't feel bad for them because they choose this life. They could easily choose a simple, nice woman, but they choose this life. Still, they work and hard, they go to the gym, they yeah. try and be like they've become masculine, they cover the bills, they're just trying to it find is a, It's a really it's poor deal hard. for them. It's because It's hard. a really poor deal because what happens is they're the ones doing everything. Yeah. Both are cheating, but she's doing it on your watch and she's doing it with your credit card. So he's getting a way worse deal, way worse deal. But I always say it's your selection process. Who tells you to date these kind of women? That you had a billionaire in the past and has had all this work done. You think she got that for free? You have to look at your selection process. As you get more successful, you choose more promiscuous. What do you expect? 
Mm. Yeah, they always do. You don't see footballers flying out a librarian. <laughs> you know, they, you don't, they're not going to go fly out a teacher on a lad's app. They're flying out the OnlyFans girl. And it's only a matter of time before you get lost in the source and you make that OnlyFans girl your girlfriend. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So ha, ha, what's the selection for girls then? Let's just say uh, I'm single, hypothetically. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I've been no, five years. Let's, let's just say I'm single. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the current dating market right now. How can you find a nice guy? Uh, I would say instead of thinking about what you want, is think about what you need.